صفر من Hi everybody, I'm Laurie from Laurie's Mechanical Marvels and welcome to the Monday Club. It's Monday, it's 7pm and the Bronx are yours. It's time for the Monday Club featuring your host, Jennifer Kirk, with the help of Stubborn Monkey and a wizard called Panda. Featuring the sounds of the Glasoline Symphony Orchestra and the musical stylings of Gordon the Music Maestro. Let's get ready to local exclusive Monday Club William Loudon Sons Pal Brick Wagon is now available from Rails of Sheffield. Order yours now with confidence. Let's get ready now, let's get ready now, let's get ready to gronk it. Let's get ready to gronk it. <laughs> Hello everyone, it's Monday and that means it's time for the Monday Club. And today, courtesy of the TMC Summer Sale, we have got one of their A1 locomotives. These are the brand new tooled Hornby A1 locomotives. It is uh, Knight of the Thistle. I think it was incorrectly announced as being Doncaster, but actually... I, no, did I use the wrong picture on the you thumbnail? You might have I'm done. Sorry. I don't know. I haven't really looked closely, but I remember you saying, I'll just use Doncaster. Um, I, I had a good picture of Doncaster. <laughs> but... This is the model, uh, Gresley A1 as um, 2564. Really lovely model. And uh, um, for those of you who were saying, uh, is that the right, right size on the thumbnail? Um, no. <laughs> Things on your screen may appear bigger than actual size. I made size. it large on the thumbnail so that people could see it. Big hello to Donkey's Mother Railway, Harry Sedgwick, uh, Julian, you know. Wam Gok, Ian Turvey, Malcolm Moore, Busby Junction, Patrick Ling, Sarah Davis, uh, Tom Lundy McInnes, uh, Mike Lane, TD120, Patrick Ling, Flymo Chairman 1, Harry Sedgwick, Richard Swiderski, Jerry BBR, Francis Wadsworth, um, Wam Gok, Sarah Davis, Hot Dog Pilot, Andy, Stephen Turner, Caroline Rogers, Peter Jackson, Cheadle Heath. It's great to see you. Hope I find you all well. It's great, isn't it? It's very hot and humid where we are. Uh, we've got Ivor Junction says, Good evening, Jenny and Zoe, and good evening to all in the chat. And, um, right, so what we're going to be doing, you know the drill. Uh, yeah, I was just looking around actually. I did have a drill up there. We did, but I think it's downstairs it's charging. Down it's downstairs because I've been working on the garden railway. She has, and she made me film it. So, um, you may have. My caught... goodness, that's great. You may have caught sight of some photos of this bridge getting shared online. So the Garden Railway proceeds apace, and this is actually, um, it shows how well uh, a grey plastic bridge scrubs up. This is the LGB bridge, um, catalogue number uh, number 5060 is, the, is this, and really hard to get. LGB do appear to be the, uh, the kings and queens of back order did manage to find one at Gage Master and what I did discover I didn't know this Gage Master you need to trumpet this a bit more because I didn't know when to... <laughs> because I didn't know until I bought this but anything you buy over 25 pounds so if your order is over 25 pounds postage in the UK is free from Gage Master so that might be actually quite a consideration if there's um, a few bits and pieces that you're after and they've also got quite a good comprehensive range of especially some of the overseas brands. Um, what's in the news? Well, we've had uh, Rapido have again been sharing some more video footage of the um, painted samples of the 15XX Pannier and also another video of the Jones Goods I've seen doing the rounds. And um, we've also had uh, some information from KR Models on the DHP1 a prototype locomotive from Clayton Equipment Company 
uh, which they're doing a model of, and we finally got to see... Is that the uh, one in the blood and custard? It's, yeah, it's like kind of a blood and custard, but it's like a maroon and cream. It's like not quite blood and custard. It's, it's jam and cream on a scone. Scone? No, because it goes fast. Scone. Yeah, scone. Scone. Scone of stone. Jum, jum, jum. Scone. <laughs> scone of... St scone. Anyway. It's and the fastest uh, biscuit in the area. The scone. No, it's scone. The scone of stone. Right. Anyway, so Jan, Zoe, is there a giveaway today? No. <laughs> so should we? I'm going to keep it now. Should we have <laughs> some questions? Well, no, no. Let's get like give people a few minutes to get on into the okay. stream. Well, at least Don't tell forget, them how this is going to work. Yeah, how this is going to work. I'll tell you in a moment. Don't forget to like this stream. And uh, also, do please share it on social media. Let people know about... Is that... No? Oh, we're, we're coming back. I don't know what's going on there. We thought we fixed that problem. Yeah. Um, Virgin went down on... <laughs> oh, the Virgin was completely off on uh, Saturday. Yeah, um, there's been um, Virgin issues, um, and uh, Sarah Davis preempts the questions with number one, Daypole, number two, Daypole, number three, Daypole. Hot Dog Pilot Andy asks sponsor. The sponsor is Billy's Replacement Wagons. You'll find a link down below that takes you to Rails of Sheffield to pick up your own exclusive Monday Club Pal Brick in the livery of William Loud and Sons. So, um, Dundee Road says, I can't send messages. Um, to who? Um, I don't, I, yeah, um, Virgin went, went down last week for me during the Monday Club stream, says Ben Tullet. Ah, um, yeah, Virgin's been a bit on and off. I don't know what's going on. Maybe the heat's uh, not helping. Let's change the angle of the dangle. Let's what, what's really upset me there is that that we sorted everything. Yeah, That's yeah, we F did. Right. Um, so. Um, oh, so YouTube's got a chat issue as well. Oh, right. So it's all go, isn't it? So don't worry because the giveaway, courtesy of the TMC summer sale, is via email. Oh, no. um, <laughs> it is is via email. So how's this going to work? Well, we're going to ask three questions, sorry, <coughs> there we go, three questions uh, throughout the course of the first hour or so, and then... To witness the call, tee hee hee, answer, answer me, me these questions, questions three! <laughs> no, uh, so there's going to be three questions. Now, don't just fire up the answers for each one in turn as we ask them, because the, otherwise you won't count. We need an email with all three correct answers, so you need to keep a note of these. And then you'll send them via email to zoe.robinson at gmail.com. And uh, um, the cupboard monkey is about to put this up on the laser display screens, a.k.a. the chat, um, so that people uh, know what's coming on. And John JMC, big hello to you, says there is a bonus prize. Ha 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 ha. Um, yeah, but we'll save that for the end. Um, but, um, but, I said but. <laughs> I've lost my train of thought. Um, Jose Antonio Texera, Tex uh, oh, um, I do know how to pronounce that name. I have seen it before, um, but, um, no, it's gone. I'm really sorry. It says, hello, Jennifer, watching in Curtiba, south of Brazil. Very good channel. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I think I think you're the first person um, that w we've known is watching from Brazil. Um, I don't say that in a very creepy way. It's just because obviously you've told us. Um, but um, congratulations. Thank you so much. Great to see you. And I hope the weather is uh, treating you well um, out down there in a uh, South American continent. Um, Paul Higgins says, is there a booby prize as well? No, I have to keep the booby prize. Uh, <laughs> She's not given me away, so no. <laughs> uh, I think we had Nick... Um, <laughs> New Junction was in. A big hello to you. Mike Lane, TT120, says the PC Wiggum A4 is on there. Oh, yeah. It's Police Chief Wiggum. 
uh, aka Walter K. Wiggum, still on the turntable. We have had a few changes. Um, in local you have a and... very nice uh, new local that's about to come into shot. In, yes, uh, so grey and yellow. And Upwell and Onward says, "Oh, good morning from Southland, New Zealand. A big hello to you. Great to see you, and I hope you're well. I don't know what time it is there. Oh." A Monday club hour is never late, Toto Wagons. Nor, Nor is he early. early. He there arrives precisely when he means, means to. to. Thanks, Gandalf. Um, so obviously we, we, we're making an assumption there that you haven't been lurking, but... Uh, uh, if someone says uh, that they're coming in late, then they come in late. Yeah, and for any newcomers, welcome to the channel. Great to see you. Don't forget to tickle that subscribe button and ring the bell. Jenny. Because... There might be other giveaways at some point, but more of that later, courtesy yeah. of Digitrains in Lincoln. So well, we will tell you more about that later. Jenny. And a big, big thank you to Digitrains in Lincoln. But we're going to concentrate Jenny. on today's giveaway. What do you want? The cork, please. Oh, did you? Oh, you should have said something. Thank you. Mm. Mm. Okay, so I can talk while I'm drinking because I'm a chocolate. Yeah. Um, <laughs> got look here, got look here. Root Beer King 28 says, Morning from across the pond in the great state of Texas. Great to see you. I hope you've got your 10 gallon hat on. Mm -hmm. uh, Steve Ball says, Liking the Dutch 33. Yeah. And this Wednesday's video on the channel will be the full review of that very model. The Class Which I'll 30 be editing uh, the, the rest of later today. It's the um, Hellion Class 33-2. It's had a new release, and it does feature upgraded electronics inside. And as you'll see in the video, it does feature a lot of scope for a bit of easy customization uh, with plug-and-play additional lighting ports, um, because they, they fitted it with the 21-pin PCB, but that's actually common across lots of different models in the Hellion range. So it has all the connections for up to 10, excuse me, auxiliary outputs. And that means that if you want to add cab lights, tail lights, uh, engine room lights, uh, blue glow underneath just for that, that real sort of boy racer effect, there's plenty of auxiliary lighting outputs on the board for you to do that. Um, Lifestyle Unleashed, a big thank you to everyone who came to the Enwin stand at the Panath exhibition during the weekend. Uh, Leslie Gilpin Railways, as uh, a high Partick Hill, high Craig. Well, Iron Horse Railways in Partick Hill uh, Station. Tom Laundy McInnes says, "How many wagons is the Class 33 hauling?" I think somebody did count them last week, because that train of wagons has been running around for quite some time. And it's about 54, 55, something like that. And um, it is a testament to how well these locomotives perform that that is just romping around with that, no hint of wheel spin. And it's, it's not actually on a high power setting either. I think it's on um, um, 30 out of 128 speed steps. Um, and um, certainly the mechanics and the electronics on the Hellion models are really, really good. Uh, Wangok says, any news, Jenny? Well, we did share that a little bit at the beginning. KR models have shared the livery renders for the Clayton... DHP1 uh, models that are forthcoming. It looks really nice in that kind of maroon and cream. It's very reminiscent of um, some of the earlier BR colours. Um, very unsuccessful locomotive. I think it has to take the biscuit in a way of being the least successful locomotive offered ready to run. Um, although it probably ties... 57 wagons plus a brake van. Oh, you've been counting, have you? Yes. So there we go, 57 plus brake van. Um, Gronk it up, says Tim's Model Railway in different Gronk videos. Gronk it up. Gronk it up. Gronk it up. Not a cult. By um, the way, I heard someone in the, the Monday Club Facebook page today suggested uh, that the Clayton DH1 counts as a super Gronk. Ooh. Interesting thought. Um, I, see, the, the, the Super Gronk or the Mega Gronk, I would have thought, would be the Class 13. Mm. Um, so I'm going to uh, put a poll into the chat, but hey! Yeah, will you, will you? To see whether it gets that, whether that special status. Yeah, so should the DHP1 be a Super Gronk or not? 
But actually, um, I think that and the leader, although the leader, actually, they were making more of them. They never completed them and they got scrapped. Um, but um, I would say the DHP-1 is probably the least successful locomotive ever offered as a ready-to-run model. So I'm just going to put that out there. But I think it's time for our first question. So uh, that, the Super Grand Prix thing is not the first question. <laughs> just as a, just as a quick yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> anyway. Um, okay, here you go. Here you go. Here's the questions. So you can keep them right in your head. Right. So question number one. Question and so, one. And um, so keep a notepad handy because um, what we need to do is um, you need to... Uh, Write these down and then send all three answers in one go to zoe.robinson at gmail.com. That is the correct address, isn't it? Zoe.robinson at gmail.com. And if you put in the subject line... Um, loco giveaway. Loco giveaway. Then it just helps to be able to find them. So question number one is, the Gresley A1s were reclassified to which class before their rebuilds into A3s. So the Gresley A1s were eventually rebuilt into the A3 class, but before they all were, the remaining members of the class were reclassified as what? Now, please, no answers in the chat. Um, so uh, uh, you, you will be put in the agony booth if you put... Uh, <laughs> if you put... Uh, answers in the chat you will not be allowed to gronk it yes and um, <laughs> i think we, we may have to get quite severe and disqualify people who uh, uh share answers in the chat not that we've had that many that do that but just no, in no, case no. um don't get smaller railways is the super gronk is the class 13 not the dhp one i would go with that no i said i'm with you on that i see them fighting words i think it's only the cupboard monkey who's put the um, i did not suggest put this. the large bag of breadcrumbs I, amongst the pigeons i did not i did not suggest this this was someone else what who this was someone on the facebook group we'll close the poll in uh at 20 past Naive Gage says, I recently got a Farish Fowler 4F, performs really badly. Has anyone else got one? Now, oh, your first port shame. of call, clean the wheels and make sure that all the pickups are touching pickups the wheels. Pickups are such a, an Absolutely. easy fix. Absolutely. Um, and it's, it's something I've seen time and time again with model locomotives that the pickups don't properly touch the wheels. And what you've got to do is slide each axle from side to side and at the extremities of travel you've got to visually check that those pickup wipers are still making contact with the backs of the wheels if they're not then that is likely to be your problem um 1968 concord also says a class 13 would be a winner now um the cupboard monkeys just put our first question again into the chat so you need to be writing that down for your chance to be um, uh, having this giveaway courtesy of TMC Summer Sale. And uh, currently they've got uh, two different versions of the Gresley A1. Knight of the Thistle that you see here, but also Doncaster as well. And we featured both of those in a review video last week. And uh, they are at 50% off RRP. So uh, let's change the angle of the dangle, shall we? True, that is true. So uh, just want to. There we go. Um, DJ K Triple Six says hi all. Just popping on very briefly. Hmm. Well, that that would suggest a degree of lateness. He's also not the only one who's coming late, so oh. we must say. Oh hello, Skipsy Trains. To Mr. Also... Gandalf. And, uh, Skipsy Trains who spotted you there being late. <laughs> a Monday clubber is never late, Toto Wagons, nor is he early. He arrives precisely when he means to. Thanks, Thanks Gandalf. You're oh, welcome. <laughs> um, Samuel Ives says, Good evening, everyone. Um, Mousehole Rail, great to see you. Hope we find ah, you well. It is 20 past. Oh, so, Peter Jackson Sheila Huth reminds me that the class 11s and 12s are coming along, the Model Rail Magazine specials, and at a recent show as well, oh. there was some uh, oh, livery oh, oh, savoir. Oh, oh, oh. 
51 to 48 percent. We almost had a Brexit split there. Hey, hold on. That means there's one percent missing. One percent haven't voted. I don't know. Well, no, it doesn't count people. That means that that one percent of people managed to find an, an, a third option that wasn't. Or that's slightly over 51 percent, or slightly over 48 percent, and it's rounded. It's a rounding error. All right. DJK666 says, I hope Gandalf doesn't have a blister on his foot like I do. I was at Silverstone yesterday. No, Ooh. I told you last time we were... You sh we you're not supposed to run. You're supposed to do the course in a car. Yeah. Thanks for joining, for nicking my joke there, Jen. Oh, I didn't know that's what you were doing. Oh, I was just my blasting goodness. through. Oh, my goodness. What is she like, guys? I, I'm... <laughs> Um, Zantek asks, is that a GWR castle pulling the Gresley teeth? No, it's actually a, um, uh, a mogul, a 43XX mogul, which is a Daypole model. We did feature that in a review, actually, when it came out. The answer's table. No. Um, funny enough, actually, um, I'm just looking round, it would seem that, um, all the locomotives running, with the exception of the Class 25, which is uh, on, you can't see it on the screen, the 25, and then you can see most of the others. They and were they all subject to, to previous review videos. We do like to uh, keep on um, uh, putting them out there on show, showing yeah. that they do last quite well, not just within the <laughs> confines of a review. So that mogul's actually, one of the things when I did the review, um, it didn't have the greatest of traction, but what I found is that the more it's run, the better it's got. And I think it's just simply a case of it's worn a, a layer off the wheels, uh, probably a very, very shiny, slippery layer on the wheels. And that has actually improved the grip somewhat. Little Britain says, first time catching you live from Ontario. Big hello Welcome. to you. Welcome. From the Dominion of Canada. Actually, it's not Dominion anymore, is it? You haven't been a Dominion for your entire life. It's a, it's a country. It is, yes. Sorry, I'm thinking of the A4. Yes, remember, um, remember, we are the largest exporter of Independence Days in the entire world. Yes, yes. <laughs> America, of course, recently had their Independence Day. But Canada You're had welcome. Their first. <laughs> yes. Canada Day was first. Yeah, because just remember, Americans, you can't have Independence Day without us screwing up Empire. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't screw it up. We were very, very good at it. Um, well, that's, the, that's why everyone else doesn't like us. <laughs> uh, Iron Horse Railway says, I'm afraid of not enough of a Steam Loco fan to have a single clue about what the A1 was before it became the A3. Can't seem to find any info about the intermodel years. You might find it in Jenny's review during... Yeah, it's the in the review, review video. One of the things that we do like to do is uh, reward long-term viewers of the show. And don't forget that we do seem to have quite a regular um, patter of giveaways at the moment. So regular viewers do gain an advantage. Yeah. Uh, Dundee Road says, took a bit of Googling. Um, so the information it is, is out, out there. there. If I do go now, yeah. I if I, I know it, it, then everybody else should know it. Um, Rick Morley says, um, "Zantek, it's Cooper exhibition this weekend. Is that Cooper Angus?" Says, "I'm in uh, Rutland this weekend instead. Close wallet call. Oh yeah, I can sympathise with that." <laughs> uh, Worthington Model Railway says, "Biden is visiting with the King today." Oh, my condolences to Biden. <laughs> Ah, uh, in a stiff breeze, does um, does Charles flap away still? <laughs> he's weighted down by all his stuff. That's why he's wearing the crown. Stops him floating away. Aaron says, Jenny, maybe you should paint a model you of yourself and paint it, place it somewhere we can spot it, then move it to a new place each Monday club. Well, we do have an O-Gage one, and of course you too can get your own model you 3D print of yours truly, Jennifer Kirk in a pose that was scanned at Alexandra Palace. So if you uh, head on over to the Model U website, you can find me and order me in any yeah. scale from N-Gage through to uh, 112. They yeah, have the right. Preserved Society Calcius. The yeah, there. so there you, there the you are. The answer is there. Took me a, a minute. Yeah, it's like right there at the top of Google. 
Um, well, anyway, we're you. not supposed to be helping people. No, but I'm just saying ooh, that the ooh, answer ooh. is out there. Roger Wollstonehome says, hi all. Sorry I'm late. A Monday clubber is, is never, never late, late to the wagons. wagons. No, no, nor are they early. early. He arrives with, who's this farmer who keeps trying to put it on my, you know, my shtick? Come on, come on, Gandalf. They Never arrive precisely time. when they mean to. Oh, well, thanks, Gandalf. Thanks, Gandalf. Rick Morley says it's Cooper Five. Aha. Uh -huh. um, Lifestyle Unleashed says I'll have to put some things up for you to give away Sunday. Um, uh, uh, that'll be most welcome. Thank you so much for that offer. Yeah, that, that we is will a take you up on generous that. generous offer. Thank you. Uh, Aaron says I will buy one when I start my double O gauge. Is it possible now to see the model you O gauge, please? We um, you've got it downstairs somewhere. I don't know where you Do put. I? It. I don't know where you've put it. I, I know exactly where it is. It's sitting on top of a Wii U because I haven't uh, painted it yet. Yeah, still waiting on that. Yeah. Well, stop giving me hours upon hours and of footage to edit. <laughs> Uh, Valley's 56 exits. Well, I'm stuck on the first question. Well, uh, Dr. The Google, is out there. Dr. Google would be your friend. Or the watching, my, watching my previous video. You'll have to go split screen and uh, and uh, watch the Monday Club and the <laughs> the A Gresley A1 video. Zach Scriven says, "Sorry, I'm late, my friends. That's okay." Um, Gandalf is currently stuffing his face with biscuits, so I think he might have sneaked in on that one. Um, uh, oh, thank you so much, George Botterini. Great to see you. Not seen you in ages. And I hope you are well. Thank you so much for the generosity. Uh, donating $9.99 US uh, in the Super Chat. That is amazingly generous of you. Says, hi ladies and all, been a while. Um, it has, yeah. We, we, I think we asked the other week uh, if anybody knew uh, where you were, but um, uh, it's uh, great to see you in and I hope you are well. Um, Trains, kits, etc. says, Dundee isn't in Angus, is it? I don't know. I'm not that up on um, the counties in Scotland or Wales for that matter. Um, probably know more of the counties in Wales than I do Scotland. Uh, Machine at New Zealand says, so, hi all, XPOM watching from New Zealand. Great to see you, I hope you find you well. We've got a few um, New Zealander Kiwis in. Um, so it's really, really great to see all you guys. Of course, um, I think the railways in New Zealand, they sound like three foot six. They're a bit narrower than what we've got. Uh, Rick Morley says, Dundee is in Angus. Um, Nick at Bletchton High Level says, Q1, no probs. I said, yeah, you've already won one once. Um, I think you won the last one. What was the last one? The Class 108. I lose track. We've given away so much great stuff here. Giving it back to the community so you don't have to. <laughs> um, but also, we couldn't do it without the generosity of the support of uh, manufacturers and retailers. Charlie's Train Depot says, hello, everyone. Watching from California in the US. Great to see you. I hope you find you well. It's probably nice and warm there, but I'm guessing it's dry heat in California, which is a bit better than the uh, rather humidity that we get here. And also a big hello to Henry. Hello, Henry. I can see you. Are you behaving yourself? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> come on now. Um, ask your granddad to um, <laughs> ask your granddad what's going on. Uh, but it's great to see you, and um, maybe see you later this week. Um, awesome Breck says, uh, Angus was in Hartlepool. Oh, okay. Um, Melchester Model Railway says, please miss, I can't do question one. <sighs> I'm not going to spoon feed you all through it, but suffice to say, the information was there in the history section of the, um, uh, the video that we put out last week featuring the full review of the two models that TMC have in their summer sale. And uh, also don't forget the Digitrains have also got their summer sale on and they have very, very kindly donated this for another giveaway. So we will be talking about this later on and uh, we'll be doing the giveaway for this uh, thanks to the generosity of Digitrains in Lincoln on 
excuse me, next Monday show. And this is the uh, Oxford Rail N7 in the Great Eastern Railway Grey Livery. And thank you to John JMC for organising that. Partick Hill Station, hi there. Um, Hannings Rest Model Railway says, I used to be on here as Gordon Hanning. I do remember now. But I have now started a YouTube channel called Hannings Rest. Excellent. Uh, ben Tullett says, has anyone got the cheat sheet? Well, I have. <laughs> Richard Sweeney, present. Um, Mike Langford says, hola, from 11,000 feet up in the Peruvian Andes. Cusco, Peru, presume okay to try for the giveaway from here? Yes, definitely. Although um, I will say that, that certain locations around the globe may prove very expensive on postage. So what I would say is, you know, whilst we're, we're quite happy to post to anywhere that's within reason, um, we might have to do a bit of discussion if it turns out that postage is like, like silly amounts. So yes, definitely do try for the giveaway. Um, but there is a small caveat that if postage is coming to like 50, 60, 70 pounds, it might prove that we'll sort something out. Um, Let's Make Tracks asks, any more TT120 videos coming? Uh, yes, in the future we do have some plans, but it is so busy here at uh, Jenny Kirk Towers. I have so many different projects on the go, including you will have seen the rebuilding of the O-Gage Garden Railway. And uh, that's proven to be a very popular series. Garden railways always are, especially when the weather is really, really nice. Um, so, oh, I, I see that I the... I have no idea where I've put it. I well, know I've... it's in the office. I just can't <laughs> put my hand on it right now. Yeah. That's the fact that they have to move that thing around. So, um, the, the, the monkey has returned. Otter Junction says, Jenny, how's the Garden Railway build going? Well, we had the latest... Um, the latest episode, oh wait, no, we filmed it, but the latest episode goes out on this Friday, isn't yep. it? Yes, so um, episode three of the build is going to be going out on Friday on the channel. And I did show, uh, here it is, one of the bridges that Stop I... Stop giving them spoilers. So, uh, well, I'm just, I just like lifting it up because... Get to sniff the paint. Um, it is Ooh. dry, but what? TT one twenties hit the shops in Australia. Ooh, nice. Yes, I did see that. Now it's quite interesting. The TT one twenty range has um, is now being sold through retailers. Hornby have um, done a bit of a change around it. It was originally slated as being direct from Hornby only. But after a little bit of a shake-up at Hornby, um, it's now being stocked by quite a few different retailers. And yes, I believe it has reached the shores of Australia as well. Um, <laughs> Sarah Davis says, that's not a spoiler, Zoe. That's a bridge. A spoiler goes on a car. <laughs> It's that tumble of clowns again. They've got, a, they've got their hands on a loco. There's some lungs on that clown with the trombone, you know. Yeah. So, tumble of clowns has passed through. Jenny, what's question two? All right, so, question two. I don't know, if you show me the cheat sheet, I'll be able to tell people. Have you forgotten... You've forgotten your own questions. I did the prompt. So we're ready now for question two on the giveaway. Like I said before, you need to send your answers to um, zoe.robinson at gmail.com with a loco giveaway in the subject title, but only when you've got all three answers. We will not accept any entries that come in in dribs and drabs. So... Basically, uh, I get flooded with stuff when these yeah. go on, so I can't. Um, so, first question. Uh, the Gresley A1s were reclassified to which class uh, before their rebuilds into the class A3? So, um, we need an answer on that. If you'll have watched last week's review video, 
you will have seen the answer given in the history section of that video. But now, question two. TMC, who have very kindly provided this model for the giveaway, um, commissioned which iconic Mark I vehicle from Backman that later became a staple of the Backman main range? So that's TMC commissioned which iconic Mark I vehicle from Backman that later became a staple of the Backman main range? So that is your question two. So we're getting through these. <clears throat> uh, trains, kits, etc. Uh, hello to you. Um, 1968 Concord says, did the storms up there cause any problems? I would also like to have a giveaway. Who do I email? Um, if you send an email to zoe.robinson at gmail.com and if you, um, what, what should they put in the subject title? What? Uh, if they so if someone wants to send stuff for a giveaway yeah um so if they email you at zoe.robinson at gmail.com and actually put loco giveaway in the title uh, or, just email me uh, and yeah zoe.robinson at gmail.com we'll, we'll, we'll sort something out um azuma says i am on the other side of the globe so i may as well opt out of this giveaway thingy not necessarily, not necessarily. what we're saying is at the moment prior Postage is ridiculous. Jen's getting a bit worried about the cost. Yeah. Because we were trying to send something to uh, the United States the other day, and it was going to cost us fifty pounds. Yeah, we um, for, for something for that something that, that cost uh, 10 was ten pounds, um, and that made it prohibitively expensive. However, these giveaways, I am not uh, going to rule anywhere out. It's just we're not it's, ruling anywhere out. We 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 if it's it's uh, going to cost a fortune. We may have to make arrangements via a friend or something like that. Yeah. Um, but we can possibly sort something out. Yeah, but so, what we're saying is we're not ruling anywhere out. Anyone is uh, able to join the, the giveaway. You can take part. Absolutely. We'll work something out. It just Perhaps it won't go straight out here. You might have to... It might, what what, a, a, what a, we a might do is team up with uh, one of the mail order retailers like TMC and see whether they can get a better postage deal to yeah. send it out. So that may be the option that we use. But, we, but you are not prohibited from uh, taking part. Absolutely not. Absolutely. And then we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Yeah. So do feel free to uh, take part. And um, should your name come out of the hat, we will try and work something out to get the model out to you. Yeah. Um, Tim Krinsky says, winner pays shipping if not in the UK, EU, etc. Um, I, I, I don't want to go down that route. I, I think that, that that's, um, it sort of, um, it sours what's supposed to be a free giveaway. Yeah, I don't want so to go down that route. we're going to try and sort something out. Um, I think we can find a way, because um, I think that, for example, TMC will be able to get better rates on posting. Yeah, and then we'll so go for it. So it may well be that we end up, we send it to TMC, who then send it on to the winner. And that may be an option, but it just so that anybody overseas, um, just so you know, it might take a few weeks to get to you because it'll have to go a roundabout route. Yeah. Um, could question two be repeated? Absolutely it could. So, uh, question two, when I finally get back into your phone, TMC commissioned which iconic Mark I vehicle from Backman that later became a staple of the Backman main range. Are you alright over there? You okay? <laughs> yeah. I thought I thought for a moment there you were about to put on a silly voice. <laughs> you like look like you were like going, okay, no, just just in the zone, darling. In the zone. Hi there. What's my motivation? <laughs> Hi there, I'm Mickey Mouse. And I've come from Disney too. Are you the show? Oh, yes. Hashtag not endorsed by Disney <laughs> in any way. Oh, dear. Disney warriors did uh, not clips. Uh, Dundee Road says, this is a hard giveaway. We got accused on the last two giveaways of making the questions too easy. So um, what we want to do is actually um, 
try and, and and make it such that anybody who regularly watches the channel and this is this is a good advert for if you haven't already done so do please subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell because if you keep up to date on the videos then you will have all the answers anybody who's watched the Gresley A1 video will know the answer to question one because it was given during that video in the history section and any uh, long-time viewer of the channel will remember that we have reviewed uh, the particular model that TMC commissioned from Backman which later made it into the main range. So what you're looking for is a BR Mark 1 vehicle that was originally an exclusive for TMC and then later appeared in the Backman main range. In the same way that when Model Zone commissioned the TPO, that later became a main range model. So for TMC there was a different Mark 1 vehicle that they did the same with. Uh, a lot of people are saying it's hard. I am, yeah. Um, SHGP uh. Media says, I also watch weekly and I'm not a Scooby. Okay, the LNER Encyclopedia. Go and have a look at the Pacific classes. And one of those is the bunny you want. Uh, J. Paul Anderson says, hi all, hi ladies. Hello to you, great to see you. Hope I find Hello. you Hello. Iron Horse says, I reckon the questions are harder this week, so Zoe doesn't have to put as many question names as that. I would still keep going. It doesn't matter to me how many names we get. And Mike Langford says, postage to Peru about £24, tracked and signed for with Royal Mail. That's not bad. Yeah, um, Peru is actually half uh, of what the uh, America costs. See, I think that our post office is cocking up the prices because they quoted us like 50 quid to send two books to um, uh, Missouri and uh, in in the US and yet we were told to expect it only being about seven pounds yeah so I really honestly don't I think our post office is um, not quoting us the right prices and I trying to upsell and actually getting no business as a I result don't, I don't know um, and a Warbler Production says, I've found both answers quite easily so far. The answers are out yeah. there. We already proved that uh, the answer to question one is in the first few even listings even on Muppet Google. Like me. Um, so um, Rick Morley says, don't forget, no VAT on UK books. Um, yeah, but it, the post it, that doesn't. It's not about VAT. It's, it's about, about the, the postage. postage, physical postage costs. Uh, Anaya Ariti says, which locos are on the layout today, Jan? Well, we have got the Daypole Class Twenty Nine has just been zipping around. Let's um, change the angle of the dangle. So the brew that is true. Yeah. So um, we we'll get a better view of stuff. So oh, you just missed it. Go off the. Uh, so we've got the Hellion Dutch Slim Jim, which is the Class 33-2. Incidentally, the um, Slim Jims, the 12 members of that class, were originally slated to be Tops Class 34. But instead, they, um, they ended up as a subclass of the rest of the Class 33s. Uh, which kind of makes sense, um, because otherwise... Um, I don't know, but... Then again, the class 44s, 45s and 46s were fairly similar. Also the class 42s and 43s. So it is, in some respects, maybe a little bit odd that those 12 didn't become the class 34. But hey, there you go, a little snippet of information. Uh, Worthington Model Railway says, Hattons use DHL, way cheaper than Royal Mail and usually arrives in four days. Mm. Um, uh, Hannings Rest Model Railway says last year my wife sent 60 squids worth of kids clothes to New Zealand and it cost 60 pounds to send them. Um, Zantex says I can't even find the answer to number two. Um, I'll get, at the moment uh, TMC I think have just sold out of the last of that special commission. Now I'm going to look around and oh we haven't got any on the railway. Um, I was digging out in the fiddly yard underneath, actually. I found a couple. So, Mark 1, item of rolling stock. Um, so, if you think about it, 
What more unusual Mark I item of BR rolling stock, uh, well, of coaching stock? Uh, technically, non. Uh, what, what have you found? Uh, all I typed into Google was TMC Mark I Special Commission. Yeah, I think you guys are not being necessarily um, uh, creative enough on your Google searches. So that's the one, right, with the, one, two, three, four. So the fourth result on Google for that search brings you the answer. So the answers are no, no. that. The fourth search was on Google for me brings me the answer. Yeah, Google but you're... now sort uh, things based on uh, What do you people. think it's been listening to? <laughs> Who knows? Oh, Bo Minnick says, sorry I'm late, just got out of jail. What? Hey? <laughs> what have you been... What have you been doing? Have you been gronking it up again? As Gandalf might have something to say about this. A Monday clubber is never late, Frodo Wagons. Nor is he early. He writes precisely when he means to. Even when out of jail. For yes. gronking. <laughs> also remember, it's not what they know, it's what they can prove. Um... So, right, we've got the Class 29, uh, we've then got the Day Pole. Again, actually, there's a lot of Day Pole going on. The Day Pole uh, 43XX Mogul um, on the um, very early BR <laughs> livery uh, Gresley team. 1968 Concord, I love it. I'm a Mark I. My son's named after me, so he's a Mark II. <laughs> I like that. But it's, it's a very American thing, I've noticed, where um, you have, like, um, uh, um, Loudon Rain, R Wainwright Senior, Loudon Wainwright Junior, and then they become Loudon Wainwright the Third, and it's like generation after generation have exactly the same name. I've never seen anybody called such and such the Fourth, but I'm guessing that this is a comparatively new thing, only in the last hundred or so years. But then again, I don't know. Well, it takes time to get to a fourth generation. Well, there's certainly at the third generation, but I am curious whether anybody knows anybody, um, particularly in the US, who has their name and then it's the fourth because they're effectively the great grandchild of the original person who had that name. Um, we've, had a, we've had a few. I mean, Henry, Edward. The yeah, French went all in on Louis. Yeah, I, 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 it's, it's not a king thing. Hannings Rest, Mother Railway, thank you so much. They have liked and shared. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Leslie Gilpin Railway says Northeast and Southwest trains used to exchange locos from LNER to GWR at Banbury. So GWR locos hauling teats is prototypical. Well, there we go. I, just, I just banged on. Um, the, I, I found a rake of coaches down in the fiddle yard and thought, oh, I haven't run them for a bit. Jenny, now yep. that we're coming up to ten to eight, let's have the third question, shall third we? Third and five. So we're going to bang in the third question. Now, uh, Azuma asks, how many class R weights do you have? Not enough. I think I've got about 14 or 15. So, a recap. The Gresley A1s were reclassified to which class before their rebuilds into A3s? Question 2. TMC commissioned which iconic Mark I vehicle from Backman that later became a staple of the Backman main range? And question number 3. The Monday Club has had two co-hosts before Zoe. The Cupboard Monkey. Name either one of them. So you only need to provide us one name, but there are two to choose from. Um, and you have to go back a little way, but we do mention them from time to time. Um, and this is different from guests, so I'll stop you now if you're going to go, Oh, it's Craig, Iron Horse Railways. No, Craig comes on as a guest, but we used to have regular co-hosts that would try and make it every week. And um, there's two to choose from. You only need to give us one name. Either will do. So um, to enter this giveaway, the lines are now open, as it were. Email all three answers in one email to zoe.robinson at gmail.com with loco giveaway in the subject title. And that just helps the cupboard monkey find all those answers. So... Um, uh, get your answers in. Yeah. Good luck. Absolutely. We will be we will be uh, closing the uh, 
thing at half past eight. Yeah, half eight is the cutoff. If you're half eight is the cutoff. So if your answers aren't in by half eight, unfortunately, uh, you won't be in the draw. And we'll be putting. It's very easy to find the co-hosts. They're the ones that show up a fair amount. Yeah, they, in they are there. Videos. Mike King, they are there. If you look through the playlist for the Monday Club. Um, uh, Peb Production says, can we get a general date for the co-hosts? I'm relatively new to One the One of them is in the, in the thumbnails from quite early on. Um, we're talking a few years ago. I kind of, I think it came to an end when COVID hit. Um, but then also one of them um, moved. But um, to give you a clue... One of the co-hosts does regularly pop up in the chat from time to time. Yeah. So there's your little clue. Um, but um, if you have a look back through the playlist, is it Shed Chat, the playlist, or Monday? It's now called the Monday Club. So we renamed the playlist to the new name for what used to be called Shed Chat. Uh, but certainly if you go back to something like episode 50, you will find... One of the co-hosts. Yeah, I mean, um, they used to sort of take it in turn. So it was, um, you know, we had quite a lot going on. Um, Anthony McDonald, big hello to you. Patrick Ling says, I can't remember his name. Oh, it's mentioned. It is mentioned. He's normally in the modelling du dungeon whittling jab light. <laughs> Dion Wollaston says, I'm seeing your layout for the first time after watching your build from the start of Weir Yard. Inspirational. Oh, oh thank oh, you. Brilliant. Um, Walter Hope Valley Railway Enthusiast says, I know who one co-host is, but that's all that's you all need. You, just you name don't one need of them. both. Either one will do. So you've got two to choose from. All you have to do is tell us the correct first name. We'll, we'll even accept just the first name um, of either yeah. of the people who were regular co-hosts before the cupboard monkey. Um, yeah, I know Peter Jackson Chudley if it was a... The, right, so let's have a look. Um, oh, that, that, Mark 1968 Concord. Thank you so much for your generous offer. If you are happy to do that, um, then um, we're happy to do that as a giveaway. So um, absolutely, thank you so much for that. That would be really generous. Thank you so much. Brilliant. So um, we will take you up on that offer. And certainly, it's become a regular thing. And I think it is a great way that um, we, as bigger YouTubers, can uh, make sure that we keep in touch with uh, with our roots, uh, with uh, uh, the the community. You all right there, sir? You're, you're pulling a big funny face. Uh, oh. uh, uh. Um, question one is wrong. Um, question three, I would I would take I would that. Take as a that. But uh, yeah. So um, Andrew uh, Wells, unfortunately, question one is incorrect, but you can, of course, try again. And I think that may be Andy T741. Um, auto, yeah. Yeah, uh, don't worry about the, that. If it looks like just a typo, we'll auto correct messaging about. Um, yeah, we're, we're fairly flexible. Um, Peter Jackson Cheadle Heath says. Demonstration that the, the answers can be found. Yes, yes, yes. So, Peter Carlyle, you have got the correct answers. Your name, your name is be, in the hat. Your name is on the list. So the cupboard monkey will now start to write out the list. Unfortunately, I know a lot of people go, oh, have you got mine? Have you got mine? We cannot answer all... If, your... if I say your name is in the, the hat, then your name is in the hat. Mm-hmm. I'm just looking at it and thinking, that's not the answer. But oh, then that, the that's, that, that's the old answers. Yes, I will <laughs> change them in a moment. Yes. So... Um, Stevie Film says, I'm, I'm here not when I wanted to be, but I will have to do. Oh, it's a Gandalf moment. A Monday club hour is never late, Toto Wagons. Nor is he early. He arrives precisely when he means to. Thanks, even Gandalf. when he doesn't mean to. Roger Wollstoneholm says, who is number one? <laughs> I am number six. No, it's like, who oh, are you? you? I am number two. Uh, no, who is number one? You are number, number six. six. I am not a number. I, I am, am a free, free womble. Man. I always remember that though. That's the in that's the intro to the Prisoner by Iron Maiden. The track on Number of the Beast. Yes. 
I've never actually watched The Prisoner other than... I've seen the best. I caught the last half of the very last episode of The Prisoner. So I know how it ends. And it's very peculiar. But, um... Well, yes, you've just described the entire show. Yeah, very peculiar. The Grey Loco is missing half the train. Grey Loco? Is it? Grey I'm not sure it is. No, well, the, the Grey Loco has got um, lots and lots of stuff. Still, um, but yeah. Oh, I was actually going through telling people what else was running. Michael we Young, got, your name is in the hat. Uh, we've got a Hellion Class 07 that you'll occasionally, in fact, you'll see it just receding into the distance there, going up the grade, um, with some yeah. Hornby HTO <laughs> hoppers. I do see people calling for like, oh, won't our Cura Scale make some HTO hoppers? But actually, the Hornby HTO hoppers are quite good. I'd much rather have a new model of a wagon type that hasn't been done, ready to run. Like, for example, the HJV hoppers would be quite nice. Uh, Walter Hope uh, Valley Railway Enthusiast asks, what's the prize? The prize in today's giveaway, I should have shown this a bit more, Dan actually. Salter, your name is in the hat. This is what is being given away. This is one of the all-new tooled Hornby Gresley A1s in LNER Doncaster Green as Knight of the Thistle number 2564. And this comes courtesy of the generosity of TMC and their 50% off summer sale. Um, so a big, big thank you to them. And this is the item that we are giving away today. So um, the questions that we've been asking, if you can get I three... Will them in. James Moody, your name is in the hat. So if you can get the three correct answers, get your name in the hat, you could be winning this locomotive. Uh, Tim's Mother Railway in different videos says, I hope we've got them all right. Um, oh. We will let you know if... Uh, if um, I, I usually say if you've got one wrong... Big hello to through. Fan of Trains 5972 and also Marin49 who says, I've hit the like. Boom! Yay. Aaron asks, when is Zoe going to start her engage layout with your help, Jenny? Uh, when it, Jenny uh, stops uh, <laughs> giving me hours and hours of footage to edit every bloody week. I only give you two videos a week. That's yes, but you give me three and a half hours of footage for one of them, <laughs> and then two and a half hours for the next. Madden Steam Railway says, in my American family we have Henry I and James I, both of whom had five generations using the same name. Wow. Ooh. So basically, that's like... Um, Henry Smith the fifth. Actually, no, it wouldn't be the fifth. So that would be the fourth. Yeah, so five generations, because you'd have senior, junior, the third, the fourth. Oh, actually, it would be the fifth. Hmm. Um, Jen is not one of nature's mathematicians. Richard Swiderski says the Prisoner series was great. And, of course, if you're ever in the UK, in North Wales, you can go to Port Myrian and um, visit where... Uh, the Prisoner was filmed, also the series Danger Man as well. Gordon Hanning, your name is in the list. So I'm Hat seeing this. Julian, you know, says I've emailed in. Excellent. <laughs> Don Gets Mother Railway says, that sounds familiar. I've got two hours of footage for this APTP video, and I also haven't got enough. Um, unfortunately, I can't half talk. But um, how slick is my video work? I mean, do you find there's a lot of flubs, Zoe, or...? Uh... Well, a fair amount, but uh, it's the same amount as I make on my videos. People make flubs. I spend a lot of time making sure that uh, it uh, flows as well as it can. I mean, do you cut a lot out? I mean, yes. There's... Oh, okay. Uh, I usually lose 10 to 15 minutes at least. David Shaw says, TARDIS in the sidings. It is, actually, yeah. So let's yeah. let's change the angle of the dangle, and oh yeah, the camera's working today. We haven't had any other dropouts. I think that dropout was Virgin related that we had earlier <laughs> on. Uh, oh, Carlton Tweedle says Wheel of Death. Nobody else is nope, saying it's not because it's on green and it doesn't tell me how many's dropped out. Uh, Tim's Mother Railway in different video it says I can't wait to get the Backman to handle soon. Yeah, the, the Bankman 009 Thomas the Tank Engine range, based on the Talithin locomotives, I do like does the look Thomas really, range. really nice. But they did announce that they're actually going to do um, the original Talithin and Dolgoth, which are the locomotives that they're based on. 
I believe Duncan was based on an ex-RAF locomotive, um, which was resident at the railway. Um, I suspect actually that all of the, um, the Scar Lowy railway locomotives are based on ones that, by and large, apart from Duke the Lost Engine, they're all based on locomotives there, although Duke was based on Prince, I believe, from the Fastidiac Railway. Uh, Anthony McDonald says, Hellion Class 104 DMU, Hattons has them on order now. Um, I believe a lot of uh, retailers do have them on order, but they're quite expensive. Hillside Junction, your name is in the hat. Um, Naive Gage says, Zoe, what is your editing workflow? Any tips for making it quicker? Um, yes, <laughs> have as much uh, stock footage as you can, by which means uh, B-roll, or if you say something every, every week, or you have a, a certain clip all the time, have that prepared beforehand. Yeah. Like intros, outros, Jen's intro and outro sequences, the uh, ad uh, reels and things like that, they're all prepared beforehand. Yeah, so you're uh, not editing them every single time. Yeah. Be very much aware that if you've got to make a lot of edits very quickly between each other, uh, that it's always a good idea to have a bit of stock footage, such as the train running past or a close up on a photo, and that way you, you can hide those clips, like those changes even by sticking them all together, things like that. And uh, just go through it, have a cup of tea with you, and get into the zone. Close the door if need be so people don't come and talk to you. Because there's nothing worse for breaking up the flow than someone coming in and starting to talk at you. Isn't that right, Jim? Yeah. David is my mother always says my Hero Scale nuclear flask wagons arrived today. I'm looking forward to them. There's a set winging their way to me. I haven't I haven't turned up yet, but I'm looking forward to them. Kingfisher excuse me. Kingfisher twenty four says this is certainly a welcome watch to distract from the tundra and lift listening uh, and and listening hello from Fife and all three questions answered boom so um KTFC Max says first time viewer love the setup thank you so much and welcome to the Monday Club don't forget to tickle the like button share the video to social media and subscribe to the channel to be the first to know about future giveaways that we'll be having on this channel Ooh, ooh, Andrew Wells, hint. your name is in the hat. So this one, incidentally, stay tuned for next week. Do subscribe and ring the bell to be reminded of next week's Monday Club. But courtesy of DigiTrains in Lincoln, uh, we will be giving away this uh, N7 locomotive in Great Eastern Railway Grey as number 1002. I have done a full review on the N7, in fact twice, two different uh, liveries of it. I did review the sound fitted version as well, but do check out the DigiTrains sale. They've got a good sale on at the moment, and in particular if you want an O-Gage Gronk, they have them at £150, That's which not is a, a great price. price for the Daypole O-Gage Gronk. It's my model railway, your name is in the hat. The Little Western Model Railway says, sorry, keep dropping to check tennis scores. <laughs> but I, it's like, uh, I, 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 do, um, I do love that, but uh, pick up a uh, bottle of juice whilst you're and, there. And for, and for those... Uh, oh, you completely missed the joke. And for those who are watching in black and white, the batsman's holding the Bowman Willie. <sighs> yeah, with snooker, it's like for those watching in black and white... Um, he's aiming for the red ball, which is behind the green one. <laughs> yeah. Um, Timber Surf says, I can't find the answer to Q2. I'm afraid that Google Foo it is, is weak in this one. It, it is it, definitely it's out there. there. Um, there's a lot of people um, getting the right answer. Little you... Western, your name is in the hat. Boom. Um, just Google Foo. It is there. It is definitely out there. Yeah. Uh, uh, Winston Busby, unfortunately, um, the uh, answer to, I'm not sure what you're talking let's, about. Let's have a look. Uh, let's see if I can decide. Uh, if Jen says it's okay. So. Right. Uh, I'm afraid question two is wrong. But you can, conjunction. you can uh, go in again. Um, yeah, question two is wrong, but Busby Junction, you did get the other two correct. Please Richard uh, Bond, try again. Richard Bond says, cannot wait to get my hands on the Acura Scale Manor. 
Uh, and Shedmouth Junction says, hello folks, hope everyone is well. I've been listening in all evening whilst editing vids for the UbiTuby channel. So much to do. Uh, Wobbler Productions, unfortunately, question one is wrong. But you can, of course, try again because there is still plenty of time. Um, Kev McKay 85 says number three is the hardest. Um, and and yes is, and no, it depends. It's interesting. <laughs> They're all easy if you know the answers. Um, it's interesting. Different people are finding different questions hard. Which tells me, actually, we've got a good spread of questions yes. here. Um, if, if everybody was finding one particular one uh, difficult, then we'd know that actually maybe we've got the wrong question. But the fact that um, different people are finding different questions easy or hard yep. um, is pretty good. SHGP Media, your name is in the hat. Boom! So um, let's have a look. Let's, let's go for a different angle. So uh, there we go. Just seeing the class 29 and two-tone green go past. It's a Daypole model. We did do a full review on that when it first came out. Um, David Scott, thanks to the, in the generosity of Daypole. And it's one of the few models where they went, nah, keep the sample. So we do use it an awful lot here uh, at uh, Weir Yard Towers. And as you can see, it is a sterling performer. We have run it and run it and run it. And it is testament, actually, the drive system on that is really, really good. And we got it with a rake of, um, oh, the first two were Backman, uh, Thompson, is it Thompson? Um, Thompson and Thompson, aren't they the guys from Tintin? Pep uh, Productions, uh, that Paul Woods from Pep Productions, your name is in the hat. Uh, well, the first two are Backman XLMS porthole stock. Uh, but then we've got, uh, all the others are Hornby coaches. And we've got um, a selection of three of the Mansell coaches and then three of the Hawksworths. I picked all those up when you could buy them for peanuts. Um, I think model, I mean, it dates how long I've had those. I got them from Model Zone for about seven pounds each. My goodness. Um, Skipsy Trains, your name is in the hat. Uh, about seven pounds each in the Model Zone closing down sale, I think. May even it be before that, maybe a model zone which is having a sale. They used to do that. Used to have random things. I remember sale. one time you were umming and ahhing about picking up uh, a little green uh, salt wagon. Oh and, yeah. And uh, I waited till you weren't looking and just went and bought it for you. <laughs> you did actually. It's one of my favourite private owner wagons. Aww. Yeah. And thank you, Flymo Chairman One, for sharing the link. To the Monday Club Wagon, anybody wants to support the channel, a great way of doing so is actually to pick up your very own Monday Club Wagon. Richard Swiderski, your name is in the hat. Before uh, I do any more, I'm going to put the questions out again. Um, so yeah, you can. a great way of supporting the channel is to follow that link to Rails of Sheffield. You will find it in the description box down below. And that is where you can pick up your very own Monday Club Wagon. We've also got a full merch store where you can get your t-shirts, hoodies and mugs. And it's always great to meet you guys at Preserved Railways at uh, um, uh, shows as well, wearing your various t-shirts and hoodies. And don't forget as well, I think it's the 29th of July, the Cupboard Monkey and I will be at Rails of Sheffield at their yearly rummage sale. And we will be doing. And I live, will be rummaging. And we will be doing <laughs> live streaming from there. So that is another one to watch. Um, if you can't make it to Rails of Sheffield, we will try and bring some of the ambience of the massive rummage sale, where they open up the courtyard behind Rails of Sheffield, and um, just uh, people can roam what they call the Rails Village. There's a whole host of little buildings behind rails of Sheffield that are normally used for storage, for the staff canteen, um, uh, which are open to the public on that day. And you can pick yourself up a bargain and it is an opportunity to meet the Cupboard Monkey and myself and possibly end up live on the Monday Club's big weekend outing. Valley's 56XX, your name is in the hat. Uh, Julian, you know, says you used to buy uh, a brand new A4 for 100 quid. That's pretty good. Mark Cle Wilkes, unfortunately, question one is wrong, but you still have plenty of time to try again. Um, and Glenn Scott Trains has just hit the link. I think uh, I may, may have meant to say like button. It could be the link button. Could have gone 
and bought one of the Monday Club wagons. But thank you so much. And Skipsy Train says, myself and Mrs. Skipsy Trains will see you there. Uh, Wangok says, see you guys. I'm off now. See you next week. Bye. You Thanks take for coming care. along. I take do know care. it is a school night for a lot of people. And <laughs> by school night, I mean, oh, I've got work in the morning. Um, I don't. Well, I do. Uh, I will be filming and I'll give you a little heads up for next week's videos. Um, I will be filming a review on this bad boy. I'm Trains will take your name is in the hat. I'm going to be taking a close look at the Hornby Railroad Plus range and see is it worth the money? Does it offer a great value for money option for those on a tighter budget? Um, and then we're also going to be having, um, it's going to be a two for week next week. Uh, hopefully on the Friday we'll be having an upgrade video showing you how to get the most out of your Railroad Plus model for not too much money and really elevate it to a great level with additional lighting functions and weathering as well as now detailed Chester, your name is in the house. Iron Horse Railway says, oh, is that the one? Yes, it is, Iron Horse Greg Railways. Seven, your name is in the hat. And I'm going to try and film all my parts of the videos this week so I can get it to you on um, possibly on Saturday when we're at the DCC Concepts Open Day. And then hopefully you'll be able to turn around the weathering bit so I can get a video out on Friday. And that's part of the collaborative that we're doing with the Iron Horse Railway. So, yes. Craig Thomas, your name is in the hat. Oh, Mark Holt says, did you say my question one was wrong? Mark Holt, did you say they got it wrong? Uh, I will look back. The Growler Blackwood N-Gage layouts, my new stock drawers arrive. First time locos are all sorted into the different eras. Discovered, I, I had 257s. I don't see his name. I, I don't think we've seen, seen your entry yet, so um, uh, we will try and come to it, yeah. Um, I've, I've done that with rolling stock. I've accidentally bought the same thing twice, but never yet got the same locomotive twice, thankfully. Um, Tim's model railway in different videos. Your name is in the hat. So actually, a lot of people are getting the correct answers. Yes. Um, and there's still quite a few to process. Oh, yes. So, Like I say, you've got till half past eight, so you've got uh, 18 minutes left. And somebody said know. slice of pizza wheel, but... Um, um nobody else is seeing that so i think that um randomness where one person gets it that's your collection uh, but we've well, only lots had... of people say it it's ours yes <laughs> um we've only had the one drop out and i think that was virgin related um zantex says i have 68004 rapid times two uh, gosh um, but was that by mistake or by design? Sometimes people will buy duplicates of the same loco to do a renumbering so that they then end up with two different ones. I've never accidentally bought the same locomotive twice, having forgotten that I've already bought it. I bought I the same came film, close. the same game, and all kinds, and the same books twice. Sarah Davis, your name is in the house, but I've never bought two locomotives. Um, I came close with an A4. Um, I bought... Uh, I think it was um, it was either William Whitelaw or White Swan. Forgot I bought them, and then got really quite upset because I missed out on one or other of those from um, Hereford Model Centre at a show. I'd owned an ad over it, done the rounds. When I came back, they'd sold it, and I was like, "Oh, I missed out." And then when I got home, I realised I already had it. Now, Jerry, Jerry BBR, your name is in the hat. So. Um, we, we're starting to uh, move up a touch here. We haven't had booze on the Monday Club for a while. But I've got a Casillero del Diablo to finish off. Russell uh, Benton, your name is in the hat. So, Monday Club after hours. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's Monday Club. It's after five somewhere. <laughs> Sarah Davis says, uh, When I've seen a film on Blu-ray cheap that I've already got on DVD, I've deliberately bought it. Is that See, that's all right. There's there's a difference there. Um, but it's when you buy exactly the same thing. Tom Lordy McInnes says, OK, sorry. Oh, don't worry, don't worry. Harris, Neil, Neil Willington, your name is in the hat. Uh, 
and Harris says, I'm so sorry, I just had to go. I'm going to resend the email because I don't know if I'm in the hat or not. Yeah, that's um, fine. That's perfectly fine. Generally speaking, if you've sent the email, it should get through because we do do a troll through the spam directory and all sorts. It's one of the reasons we do stipulate, please put loco giveaway in the subject title because it enables the cupboard monkey to easily identify them. Don Eagle Dad, your name is in the hat. Canal boating is the devil's wine. Yummy. Mmm. Like, mmm. Mmm. Have a sniff of that. Oh, yeah. Yes, and for Ooh. those of you watching in 3D, how? <laughs> yeah. So, um, Wyvern Model Railway says, I know I got a wrong answer. I have resubmitted. That's fine. Can Don't I, worry about Canal it. Canal boating says the. Oh, we already read that one. <laughs> Barry Johnson says, Every time someone says day pole, take a squig. I'll oh be my drunk goodness. in five seconds. It's even worse if I take a swig when someone says gronk. Uh, right on track says, I have 5786 and L92, technically the same engine, but very different liveries. Ah, yeah, um, I do have, see, I've got um, the Aspinall Radial number 1008. I've got two versions of the same locomotive, but they were purposefully bought because they were both limited editions and both had a different version of the Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway livery. But I don't class that as buying the same locomotive twice. And I have a feeling that there may be other locomotives where um, I've got them at different stages of their life. You've got them in livery. different sizes as well. You've got uh, at least two uh, intercity livery Bronx. Ah, yes, but the one that I've got in O-Gage is different from the two I've got in double O-Gage, which are both different from each other. So, effectively, I've got three different intercity livery stuff. Um, yes, two of them are small. The other one is really, really big. Julian, you know, says, I'm worried my email has had an error in getting to you because for some reason it says sent 18.58 despite it sent just before 8pm so I'll also resend it. Yeah, don't and worry about it. I, do, I don't think if, if your computer is confused at what time it is, where the, what's wrong? Did I just put that in there before I... I'm going to have a quick... No, it's fine. You keep going. Um, yeah, we're trying to make sure that people don't end up in the hat twice. I think I haven't written it in. Okay. Good, good, that's good. Fine, that's fine. Sarah Davis says, I might be speaking he he heretically. I've bought a few Class 43 and 90, the 225, and may have bought duplicates as I never checked the numbers. Rick Molly, your name is in the hat. See, I have OCD and I don't like to knowingly buy the same thing twice. I'm going to so, put the questions in one more time. So one of the things is that, so when you see that huge long rake of coal wagons, Every single one is a different running number. Um, and the reason for this is that way back in, I think it was 2000, when I started buying Batman wagons, the um, Branch Line 16 ton mineral wagon had not long since come out. So I bought up all of the versions that were available then, and I was able to track down the previous releases from various model shops such that I got a pretty much complete set of every single 16-ton mineral wagon that was released by Backman. I don't now have all of them because they kept releasing them and I, I kind of stopped buying them after a while because they became very expensive. And there are a few special commissions. Um, I think TMC did a six-pack um, and I, I didn't get that and it has sold out. Um, Patrick Ling, your name is in the hat. Jen, would you like to uh, read out the questions again? Uh, A1, oh, okay. Right, so question one. The Gresley A1s were reclassified to which class uh, before they rebuild into A3s? Question two. TMC commissioned which iconic Mark I vehicle from Backman that went on to become a staple of the Backman range? And question three. The Monday Club had two co-hosts before Zoe, not guests. Name one of them. So there's two names, and uh, funny enough, the only ones you've shown me I've seen, uh, people all named the same one. Has anybody yeah. named the other one? Not yet. 
Richard Bond, your name is in the hat. So, um, uh, Tim Krinsky, hello to you. Great Within to see you. Model Railway. Unfortunately, the second question is incorrect. I but think they already but, said that they... they sub, so but they, you will have another chance. I think he already has. Uh, Winston Busby, your name is in the hat. Excellent. Zantex says, I, I bought a rake of mini tricks Mark 1s, and they all were released with the same running numbers. The corridor second break and the corridor composite break all both have the same number. I hate it when they mess up and do that. <laughs> One of my big gripes, because I've got OCD and I also collect books, is that the sci-fi masterworks Oh set, my goodness, the masterworks. <laughs> yeah, at the end, they kind of phoned in the performance. So uh, number 73 has number 72 on the t on the um, the spine, the same as the real number 72. They they didn't change. They they clearly just loaded the um, the same um, the thing that they'd used for the previous yeah. one and didn't change the number. And that really grates on me. Colin Weaver, your name is in the hat. Uh, Mark Holt is worried that the emails aren't getting through, but um, <coughs> all we I can say check. I will check. All we can say is that we do thoroughly check spam folders and such like, and um, you've still got nine minutes to go. Uh, as long as your entry is received before half past, it will count, even though the cupboard monkey will yes. still be writing them out for a Gary bit. Gary Patterson, down. unfortunately, question two is wrong, but you still have time to try again. Um, <clears throat> Zantex says, also my EMT Mark III TSO all have the same number, all the others had sold out. Oh, that's a The shame. Great Geraldo, unfortunately question one is incorrect, but you still have time to try again. Uh, yeah, uh, Trains with Nick says, um, I have to disagree, as the class 43 designation was used twice, the former being a hydraulic. Yeah, it's interesting actually that, um, Class 41 and 43 have both been reused for HST power cars. The two Stuart prototypes. Higgins, your name is in the hat. The two prototypes were reclassified as Class 41, but of course there already had been Class 41. And I have a feeling that Class 17 has been recycled as well. As Norman has Harrison, class your name is 01. in the hat. So Class 01 has become. Well, it's 015 has become a generic um, shunter, um, like mainline registered, like eclectic mix of shunters. But originally there were a class 01 that were a little 040 shunter, two of which survived at the Hollyhead Breakwater Railway and were the final surviving locomotives. Matt Brado, your name is in the hat. Still in original BR Black with cycling lion livery. Which was quite incongruous because they basically had never got repainted from new. They'd had wasp stripes added, I believe, and they'd also had tops numbers added. But they all they did was they repainted over the old number and put the new number in, but didn't repaint the rest of the thing. George James, your name is in the hat. Uh, but then again, you know, back in the day, we used to see. The same running number of things get produced year in, year out. Um, Hornby Doubler were notorious for it. In the BR livery, the um, five plank coal truck had the same running number for its entire run. Mark it, Holt, your name is in the hat. And I believe it was the same running number that the previous LMS open, uh, five plank open had. Um, or it might have been the, the, the LNER one. I know that the, actually the the seven plank open um, had the same number, but was the same number as the LMS one. And I think it was the L and the R one that became the BR grey one. Um, so very unimaginative. And they used to have um, uh, the same running number of locomotives year in, year out. And it was only when they upgraded to Ringfield Motors that they bothered to change the identities on locomotives. Um, which is one of the reasons I believe there's about a quarter of a million 80054 standard class 4 tank locomotives that Hornby 00 made over the production run of that model. Now, John Norman, your name is in the hat. A quarter of a million locomotives, all the same. That really does put into focus 
um, the production numbers that get made these days of items where they could even just be as few as 300. Julian Garner, your name is in the hat. Marin49 says, got to go. Good night, everyone, and good luck to all in the A1 comp entrance. Take well, care and have a good night. Thanks Absolutely. So um, we've got five minutes left to go. Do you want to read the questions out again? I will do in a moment, but um, just as a reminder, this is the giveaway courtesy of the TMC Summer Sale. It's one of the Gresley A1 locomotives in their original Doncaster Green. Uh, with the identity of Knight of the Thistle 2564. These are in the TMC Summer Sale at 50% off RRP. There's two different versions, there's this and Doncaster as well. We did a review of both of those locomotives last week, if you want to take a real close look. And certainly it's uh, a locomotive that's well worth purchasing. And I doubt that we will ever see locomotives like this at that sort of price again because prices do continue to march on upwards and uh, TMC do have free UK postage on any orders over a hundred pounds so you can buy a single one of these and it's post free in the UK uh, you might have to hunt around just to verify what it costs to post overseas and with two different versions available you could buy two for the price that you would have had one for Jamie Taverner your name is in the hat, and you're also the first person to state the second co-host. Oh, do they cite post both, or just... Uh... Just the one, like we asked, just the one. So, bonus points there. Uh... Flymo Chairman 1 says, might be doing a bit of shopping tonight. <laughs> uh, absolutely, because only one person can walk away with this for free. But if anybody else really goes, I like the look of that... TMC summer sale 50% off and a big thank you to TMC who very kindly provided this for this giveaway competition. Nick Beard, and, your name is in the hat. Ah, I recognise that name. Is that the winner of the class 108? Might be. <laughs> so it's always nice to see previous winners have another go, but hopefully somebody else will be the lucky winner. I mean, I, I, don't, we're, don't, we're not going to no, take it away from you, but we like to spread them around. And yeah. next week, just a little sneak preview. Well, today, your name is in the hat. Uh, thanks to the generosity of Digitrains, who have their own summer sale, um, we will be doing a giveaway next week for, to win this superb Oxford Rail diecast N7 locomotive in original Great Eastern Railway grey. And don't forget to check out the Digitrains of Lincoln Summer Sale, where they have some really great models, including those O-Gage Daypole Class 08s in, um, for 150 pounds, which is a great price. Tom McInnes, unfortunately, uh, question two is incorrect, but you still have time to uh, try again. Jerry BVR says, got the car service today, so the train budget is more exhausted than the car. I know that feeling well. We just had to put in a brand new central heating system here at uh, Weir Yard Towers. And we're all cleaned out. And um, You and Potter, your name is in the hat. Coupled with the fact that my, um, my other job slowed down for the summer. So I got the double whammy yeah. of having to pay out a huge amount of money. And my income dropped substantially. So I just like can't buy any lovely trains. Chris Schiller, your name is in the hat. Um, so, um, two minutes. Uh, Mike Lane TT120 asks, so a uh, bit of a basic question, are all the locos running digitally? Yes. yes. Um, Weir Yard is powered by the NCE Corporation of America. And Andy I Small, use the, your name is in the hat. I use the NCE Power Cab, and this was a recommendation from uh, Ken Patterson, Sir Ken of Patterson, uh, over at the What's Neat This Week show. Um, so on his recommendation, I upgraded Weir Yard to uh, using the NCE, and I've been very pleased with it. So uh, Andy Blackwell, your name is in the hat. I yeah, should... once you got used to it, because it is a very different experience. I, I, yeah, I moved over from the Gauge Master, which is a rebadged TCS, I believe, and um, this really does feel like a quality product compared to it. And there's a few quirks you've got to get your head around. Um, but this then plugs to... Charlie, unfortunately, the answers are incorrect. But you still have uh, a little bit of time to try again. 
Um, so um, these plug into a DCC Concepts Alpha Power and Alpha Box booster, which provides the actual power for the track. I should probably get in touch with NCE because I know Sir Kenneth yeah, Patterson is sponsored by them. Maybe I should approach them. And uh... Jerry BVR, your name is in the hat. Hmm. So um, yeah, Charlie Chimp, you're right. No, call me Snake this week. There's a few people. I, that was great to see George Botterini uh, earlier on because we hadn't seen him for a while. So I know that uh, you know a lot of people. You know, you've never seen George Botterini and Batman in the same place. Hmm. Mm. Mm. Colin Bernico, your name is in the hat. Jerry BVR says, Jenny, I got a USB interface for the NCE so I can use JMRI on a PC and phone as well as the Pro Cap. Ooh. Hot uh, dog John Gay, I'm sorry to say that uh, the question one and three are not, not right. We still have a little bit of time to send in. Uh, Mark Holt says, which controller do you have, Jenny? I missed the beginning of the sentence. It's the NCE Power Cab from the NCE Corporation of America. So, um... Uh, it's actually a really good one, isn't it? It's a really great system. Now, uh, certainly... David Rose, your name is in the hat. Probably a lot easier to get in the US for the US modelers. But in the UK, um, they, they, they come and go. And they're so popular, they sell out very quickly. So you have to keep your eye out. But, uh, Five, would... four, three, three, two... two. One. And the contest is now closed. So, we will be, uh, I'll be continuing to pick the... Are there many the more to write out? Loads. I'll be continuing to so put the names in the our questions weren't that hard then. Because oh, lots no. of people got the answers. Uh, Valley's 56XX says, No one has ever seen me and Boris Johnson in the same place. But there's other reasons for that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you were adhering to lockdown and not going to the same parties. Hey, that reminds me of that Twitter spat I had today. Lots of people were suggesting that the BBC's current issues were uh, some way of uh, taking attention away from the Conservative Party. And uh, I, I did put out, uh, I'm sorry, but the Conservatives couldn't hide getting some cake into a fat man. How are they going to start doing the BBC to keep away from their stuff? <laughs> They're not the Illuminati guys. Trains with Nick says, I've never been seen together with Elon Musk now you mentioned it. Mm. I have been mistaken for Laurie twice now, though. Charles oh, Rhodes, your name's in the hat. Is that Laurie Rose? Or, uh, or Hugh Laurie? <laughs> uh, Stevie Films says, Class 59's reduced at Happens at the moment. Ooh. And Leslie Gilpin Railway says, Happens usually have power cabs in quantity. Um, great places to try and find a power cab. Um, I have seen them come and go in stock. TMC, Rails of Sheffield, uh, and DCC Concepts. Three Model places. Railway, your name is in the hat. Three places I have seen the power cabs regularly in stock. Yeah, Flamo Chairman, cake in a fat guy. John JMC says, haha, the only question we got right was the one my wife answered. Oh. Julian, you know, says, have you done a video on the NC Power Cap, Jenny? And if not, would you ever consider doing a video showing either how it works, excuse me, how it works or a preview of it in action? Sorry, I've got hiccups. Uh, Kevin McCallandon, your name is in the hat. Did you give I... the answers out? Oh, yeah, now we're past the, um, um, and now we're past the, um, uh, the cutoff point. So question one, which was what... Were the Gresley A1s reclassified as before they were rebuilt into A3s? The answer was A10s. And the reason for this was the Peppercorn A1 the, uh, uh, was um, uh, built and arguably the much more famous A1. And um, because they were a designated A1, what tended to happen sometimes was that locomotives were moved to higher numbered classifications mm. to Nick clear Freeton, up your name is in the hat. to clear up lower classifications for newer flagship locomotives. So the Gresley A1s became A10s for a brief period of time before they were all rebuilt. So the answer we were looking for was A10. Philip McCarthy your name is in the hat. The second question was which iconic Mark I item of rolling stock uh, was uh, commissioned by TMC before becoming a mainstay of the Batman range? This was, of course, 
the Mark I horse box, um, which was an iconic model, certainly even back in the days of Hornby Double they produced two different versions of the Mark I horse box, uh, quite a desirable super detail model. Um, but bizarrely, never been offered since ready to run, other than some brief uh, reproductions through Wren using the old Hornby 00 tools. And it was TMC that commissioned Backman to produce these, and they did a comprehensive run of them in both the um, 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 maroon livery and the southern region green. And uh, these were available in either single packs or double packs. And I think they were available exclusively through TMC for about two years before they passed over into the main range of Backman and are now available through Backman Direct and any shop can stock them. And it's only comparatively recently that uh, TMC actually sold the last of the special commissions that they did. They did commission quite a lot. I think they did two runs exclusively. Now the Robert third Powell, question... your name is in the hat. Who were the original co-hosts for the Monday Club before Zoe the Cupboard Monkey took over that mantle? Um, it initially, generally did because lockdown couldn't be It's basically because of lockdown and people like you. Um, and um, there were two answers and we were looking for any one of the two. Now interestingly enough, most of you correctly picked Les Cliff. Um, a great fan of, the ch of, of his work with Not Lobia. He's got a, a great Facebook group and he's currently, uh, the main reason he stopped being a co-host apart from lockdown was that he moved house. They moved down to uh, probably about 200 miles away from here. So it's not practical for him to come in. He has visited and been a guest on the Monday Club since, but he's no longer able to be a regular co-host. Stephen now, Morahan, your name is in the hat. And prior to that, Brian Long was no, not a prior. After. Was that after Les? Yeah, Brian uh, came in after Les. Oh, I, I, in my head I had it. They that, did uh, interchange They kind of took it in turns. There were times when we had all three, I remember that. <laughs> um, but yeah, Brian Long was the other name that we would accept. I have seen at least one person did manage to pick out Brian. Um, so um he was here for quite a, a while i don't know why have you put in to enter the giveaway please email or, or have you scrolled it back i scrolled it back so that you had well, the questions scroll it up to date so i can see what people are saying yeah andy t741 les cliff legend a lot Absolutely. of people are saying what is the a1 slash one uh the a1 slash one um is not the gresley a1 um that's the other one is it now the A1 slash one would, I don't know, but it's not the one we were looking for. Um, the A10 was what the Gresley A1s were moved to. Now A1 stroke one may have been a subclass either of the Gresley A1s or the later Peppercorn A1s, but, but it wasn't, wasn't the answer. answer we were looking for. David Shaw, your name is in the hat. They were moved en masse to A10. Um, any members of the class that haven't yet been rebuilt into a three um djk triple six says uh, back on break now Boom. john jmc says they were the thompson a ones um melchester mother railway says would you have accepted persona non grata as the correct answer for question three <laughs> for anybody who didn't know um, paris balston your name is in the hat um yeah there was um uh, there was a bit of a falling out. It was a falling issues. out after we filmed a TV series. Um, so still get on great with Les. Um, but, um, These things happen, unfortunately. Yeah, you know. Um, Jeffrey Risner says, I use Digitracks with uh, y, y Throttle and Blue Nami and Bluetooth. Blue Nami, really good. Big up to Digitracks and the Blue Nami system. We did, actually um, we reviewed that and it was yeah, good. It's, it's there. It's in Walter K. Wiggum. Um, funnily enough, nobody spotted the other TARDIS. That's because you've hidden it. No, no. No, you've hidden the it really well. Other TARDIS. Oh, look. Oh, look. Look what... Look, look, look at what people were missing. Uh, look John, at what you could have seen. Stevie Films says, I believe A1 at Stroke 1 was a possible version that never happened. Um, Peb Production says, it was a prototype for a larger class of Thompson A1. 
that later was redesigned to be the Peppercorn A1. Uh, Ruben Ashwell says, I've not spotted the TARDIS this evening. Um, David Scott says, A1 stroke 1 were the Thompson rebuild of the A10. Ah. Uh, Dean Wollaston says, night ladies, till next week. Take care, thanks Take for care, coming along. Night. Um, Have a great night. Soundtracks. Why did I say digitrack? Sorry, uh, alliteration. You're absolutely right, John JMC, our guru of sound. Uh, oh soundtracks. My what do you like, Jen? Uh, like Even me. I knew that was wrong. I'm like me. Honest. <clears throat> I'm sorry, the commotion lotion has been broken out. Oh, dear. Mm. Timber sure. Surf asks Jenny Test, what does NCE stand for? Um, National. Uh, National something electronics. Um, National Corporation Electronics. I don't know. Um, canal boating. TARDIS behind the A3. No, 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 no. That's an A4. That's an A3. Is that on cat? Yeah. This blue one is an A3. Um, that's an A4. The A4 has an incredibly um, uh, iconic design. Uh, with the streamlining um, and it's the only locomotive that retained its streamlining whereas um, um, things like the W1 got rebuilt um, and uh, a number of other locomotives like the b 175s got rebuilt the A4 retained its streamlining to the end White more in the house says the Thompson A1 stroke 1 was nothing to do with the Peppercorn A1. The Peppercorn A1 is more related to the A2 stroke 2 P2. Oh, I'm going to get told off because Why? that would that would technically mean that people could argue that A1 stroke 1 was correct. But it's not the answer we were looking for. And I, 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 in fairness, a lot of people got A10, which is what we were looking for. Uh, 3P Rail, your name is in the hat. Uh, Trains with Nick says, I'm curious, would the HM7000 system be theoretically compatible with dead rail in 00, what with it needing 15 volts? I think you'd need a fairly beefy battery. Um, what you'd have to do is you'd need something that can supply the same voltage that the Stay Alive power bank supplies. Now that's what you've got to bear in mind. I, I can't remember what the power bank is actually supplying. Um, it, it should be there in the specifications, but that would be the obvious way to power the HM7000 decoder. Connor J. Houston, your name is in the hat. Without needing power from the track. So you'd need to be able to regulate the power input through the power bank socket, and that would keep the decoder running on Bluetooth. How you would do that needs an electronics expert. Lee Horton, your name John is John JMC, our guru of sound, over to you. Um, what oh, up? there we are. Hermitage Row says it's North Coast Electronics. Ah. Um, so I got the electronics bit right. Uh, <laughs> Roger Wollstonehome suggests, though, NCE stands for no cheese here. Steve Ball, your name is in the house. Uh, SHGP Media says, your question also asks, what class came between A1 and A3, but the A3 came at the same time as the A10? Well, it's what what did the A1s get reclassified uh, into? What class came between A1 and A3? Did you... Yeah, we... Yeah. They, they were moved to um, en masse to A10 before they were rebuilt. Absolutely, that's what they... So actually, I'm going to stick with that. I'm, I'm going to stick to my guns. A10 is the correct answer. Because the A1 stroke 1 were rebuilds, but this was what were the A1s reclassified as yeah. before they were, we said before they were rebuilt into A3s. Yeah. So I'm going to stick to my guns. A10. Great, Geraldo. Your name is in the hat. Um, interesting. Peb Production says the A1 stroke 1 was a Thompson rebuild of the first Gresley A1 as a prototype for the Thompson's proposed A1 class. That class never materialised since Peppercorn made significant changes once it became CME. So essentially, I was right. <laughs> um, Chris's Garden, big hello to you. Great to see you. Hope to find you well. 
says, hey Jenny, how are you doing? Do you know if there will be a Series 3 of Hornby Mother World? Now I do get asked this um, quite a bit. Um, same with Series 3 of Great Model Railway Challenge. Um, on Great Model Railway Challenge Series 3, the answer is no. Um, that's pretty much gone and um, uh, dead and buried now. Um, in terms of Hornby and Model World Series 3, I do need to chase that up because they wanted to do Series 3, but I don't, I don't know, I've not heard anything further. That doesn't mean they aren't, it just means that nobody tells me anything. Uh, it's always up in, up in the air, Head Productions, it? A10 was always the correct answer. Boom! <laughs> Um, and SHGP Media says, I mean, I don't care, because I got it right. Uh, 156 Andrew says, hi Jenny and chat, sorry I'm late. A Monday clubber is never late to the wagons, nor <laughs> is he early. He writes precisely when he means to. Thanks, Gandalf. Ah, John JMC says, it's no, it's North Coast Engineering, not Electronics. So I was completely wrong. <laughs> Harris Bolston, your name is in the hat. Um... Stephen McClay says overcast clearing. I don't know what the way we haven't got a window in here, so uh, we have no idea what it's doing outside. Um, Harris says, wait a second, no more model railway challenge. <clears throat> so I'm told. Um, Linda Rose, your name is in the hat. COVID lockdown killed it. They yeah. were starting the casting process for series three when lockdown struck, and these uh, things happen. Unfortunately, once lockdown lifted, Channel 5 had moved on, so um, it was just dropped. Um, and I feel really sorry for all the teams that were going through the casting process, because it was great fun to do. Um, Hot Dog Pilot Andy, your name is in the hat. Um, great opportunity and enormous fun. And so to be a team in for consideration in the casting process and then have the rug pulled out from under you... Um, must have sucked. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> SHGP Media says, What time are you pulling my name out of the hat? <laughs> Kevin uh, Claridge, your name is in the hat. Um, once, uh, are there many more to go? No, in? I'm almost done. So we're almost done. As soon as we're done, we're going to do the big draw. Uh, just some northerner. The evening lads and lasses. Am I too late for the A1 giveaway? Sadly, yes. Uh, we closed the call at 8.30, so... And we've already read the answers out. We've already read the answers Coretta out Coretta well. Kilfoyle, your name is in the hat. Oh, Christine Kirk says, Henry says, night, night, Auntie Jenny and Auntie Zoe. Good night, Henry. Good night, take Henry. Care. It's been great to have your company. Now, you, you take care now. No reading under the duvet with a torch. Actually, you don't need it with a mobile phone. It's like no reading under the duvet with it in, by, bathed in the glow of a mobile phone. Yeah, um, I don't have <laughs> and, and I've got to check the spam folder, but uh, everything else appears uh, all set. And, and remember, when you're playing Grand Theft Auto, mirror signal manoeuvre, yeah? And then run everyone over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, you take care. It's been great having your company and maybe see you later in the week. Uh, Harris says, that was a great show, especially when Scotland won the first season. Um, and James Pett says, I see we have another giveaway. James Pett is late. He is late. A Monday clubber is never late to the wagons, nor is he early. He arrives precisely when he means to. Absolutely, Gandalf. So we're shortly going to be doing the pick for this. Julian Garner, your name is in the hat. Let's go with a different angle of the dangle. Um, Sarah Davies says, I remember when playing Grand Theft Auto to pay the, the tunes properly. What? Okay. Family show. Family show. Uh, Andy T741 says, you like me, Jen and Rubo. Always kept in the dark. <laughs> yeah. And fed on SHIT. <laughs> There's some weird stuff in my spam folder. Is Apparently, there? Apparently, according to this spam bot, I am the man that they're looking for. It's like... That's news to me. Wow, they've really lowered their standards. <laughs> the thing that gets me is, did you see the news article? Nigerian man found with $45 billion in his uh, apartment because despite sending out numerous emails, he couldn't get anybody to take it off him. Yes, uh, yes Lee yes. D. Holden's... Yeah, a Monday clubber is never late. Uh, so, 
Are you going to... Ah, uh... James Pet said my arrival time was on account of having had afternoon tea. Ooh, very nice. Oh, nice tea. Jenny, can uh, you confirm that there are names in the hat? So I can confirm that there are many names in the hat of, the ult hat. <laughs> of Ultimate he Games. Said, mix them all up a bit and then... Uh, okay, so... Oh, hold on. Did I... No. I, I'm, I'm going to turn the fan off whilst I do this. Yeah, that would be a very good idea. So I, just, I don't think we've scattered bits of paper. I can't anymore. see any. So, right, I've mixed them up. And uh, we've still got a good turnout here, people. Don't forget to tickle that like button, share the video, and subscribe to be the first to know about next week's giveaway going live to get that reminder. And this comes courtesy of Digitrains in Lincoln, who also have their summer sale. But that's not what you're but here ladies for. and gentlemen, we are We're here for this. To... Yes. This it comes courtesy of the TMC summer sale where they are 50% off RRP. So if you don't win, then don't worry. You can still pick yourself up a bargain. But one lucky person, one lucky person. Uh, there we are. I'm going to pick this one. Okay. I'm, I'm burning up, so I'm turning the fan back on. So, drum roll, please. Okay. Ta -da. So, I, I know who's won. Do you know? Well, so no we've got so Sue at Putnam Junction says good luck all who entered. Uh, Sarah Davis says take pride in that cowboy hat. Yeah. Ped Production says I love Digi Trains and Richard Swiderski says the lucky person is dum 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 dum. Kev is that Kevin McCallender? Kevin McCallender? Kevin McCallender. I am going to email you right now so that no, just uh, just out of curiosity are they they're not not the one in Peru are they? <laughs> I don't know. Um, we'll find out. So unfortunately, yeah, David Shaw, sure, not not you, but everybody is in with a chance. Next week from seven, we will have three more questions, and these will be Digi Trains themed. Um, and this is to win the Oxford Rail M7 that is very kindly being provided by Digi Trains of Lincoln, uh, where John JMC, our very own guru of sound is uh, hard at work and if he cannot fit sound into it it is impossible to fit sound into the model so just so you know if you're looking at a model and going oh, they'll never fit sound in that there's one guy i know who probably can john jmc he managed to fit sound and to stay alive unobtrusively into a quarry hunslet the one what without the cab what oh, i'm trying to send the guy a, a, an email saying congratulations you're born i can't remember what you want um a1 Wesley a1 so um that was that was great don't get my says that one was fun good questions yeah they were actually we had a lot of people um uh, get the, the questions right uh, about what we normally get actually the hat looked to be about as full as usual uh bgtt120 says artfully dodge dying horse <laughs> and uh, andy t741 says congratulations to kevin um, Ped Production says, I'll have to abstain from that. Already got one of those. I must admit, I've already got one. So we might actually, we'll have an N7 Fest next week. I will get my version of this model up and running. I've also got a uh, BR Black one. And I, I think actually John JMC, um, our very own guru of sound, um, you probably shouldn't enter as well on account of you working at DigiTrains. Um, there we go. I've sent him the email. A so pet congratulations. So, uh, do we know where he's based? No, I have so, no idea. Um, Mike Langford says, question three has me stuck. Uh, the correct answers were, you, had, you could pick from either Les Cliff or Brian Long. They were the two names of former co-hosts of the Monday Club. Um, and basically... But we only needed the first names. Yeah, you only needed one of those two. Yeah. Um... And, uh, Trains with Nick. It says, I believe there is a sound fitted Wickham trolley, yes. Um, I would guess in double O that John JMC has gone, haha, easy peasy. And I fitted a crew and uh, stay alive and fully functional lighting. Tell you what. Yeah, what, what? Since we had a lot of people. What? Pull another name out the hat and they get a book. A book? They'll get a book. Oh, right, okay. We'll, so... send, them, we'll send them a book. Okay, so I'm going to have a, have a rummage. 
Just and, as a quick extra one. Okay, so the cupboard monkey, you, you, if this ends up being a 50 quid postage to, to <laughs> <I'll> walk. <laughs> so we've got. I can't read your handwriting. So, a winner of a book. Connor J. Houston, you have won a book. Oh, wow, and thank you, Tim oh. Prinsky, very generously donated. 20 US dollars on the super chat. Thank you so much. Um, that is very, very kind of you. So we've just picked, do you want to say the name again in case Connor people... J. Houston. Congratulations. So Connor J. Houston's got the runner up prize, the booby prize of one of my books. Um, so what did you do with the, the ones going to America? Did you have to refund them in the end? I refunded them and I told them to email me and I will send him the ebook versions instead as a, as a free thing. Yeah. As a, an apology, but I've refunded the money because that's all I could do. So did you explain to them that the postage was it, coming it, out? It quadrupled. It was ridiculous. Mm. Yeah, so, so uh, unfortunately you didn't win a train. Here, I have a, I have a book. Oh, so, oh, that's great. I've got a wobbly table and that's just the right thickness. Actually, if you send us the measurement of how big the gap you need the book to fit in under your wobbly table, then we have several books to pick from, so we, Jenny, don't put yourself down. So like we that. might be able to help because um, we can provide any one of about five or six different thicknesses. So Kim, Tim Krinsky, thank you for your generosity. Good night to you. Great show. Thank you so much. Uh, Jerry BVR says, and the third prize wins two books. No, the third prize <laughs> wins a mention. So I pick one. Oh, out. don't do that! Don't do that! No. <laughs> no, no, no! I, I, I wouldn't be that cruel, <laughs> Mr. Twain P. Diddley. <laughs> uh, but um, brilliant. So uh, there we go. And like I say, don't forget to tickle that like button, share the video, and also subscribe to the channel because. We seem to be the home of the giveaway. We are the channel that likes to big up the um, the community. And I know that we haven't shown any of you guys' videos this week. Um, unfortunately, when we do the giveaways, it kind of eats into the time. Um, <clears throat> but we will try and catch up with that when, if we have a week without a giveaway. But next week, courtesy of DigiTrains, we'll be doing a giveaway for uh, this. Maybe we'll try and fit the, the videos in early. Mm. So if we do maybe do the videos from eight to half eight and then uh, when we close the giveaway competition. So next week we might try and rejig it a bit so we can show some of you guys' videos and highlight some of the great channels that are out there on YouTube. Because we know just how hard it is to build an audience here on YouTube. So we are first and foremost here for you guys, for the community. The Monday Club is your online model rail community. Uh, David Scott says, uh, great stream as usual. Catch you next week, good night all. And New Junction, great to see you in. Hope you're well. It says, enjoyed this week's stream. Thank you so, so much. Uh, Matthew 100, good night to you. Um, and Fly My Chairman 1 says, is it the answer? Uh, Julian, you know, says great stream time. Thank you so much. And Sarah Davis has really gone quick this week. It really uh, has. Right, I've got to go and boot my computer up. Uh, Jamie right, says uh, in 15 minutes I'll be starting up on uh, the Game Hammer channel. So if you and, and if it you will automatically had of us. <laughs> it will automatically give you an option to move straight Jamie, on over. There you are. You do you to... fancy popping in for a game of Ticket to Ride? Uh, yeah, maybe we will. So maybe what I will do is we will do an online ticket to ride. This is a, uh, it's a board, you can buy it as a physical board game, but there's a computer version which you don't have to clear up afterwards. It's great because there's lots of little pieces and cards and stuff and the computer does a much better job of shuffling than me I, so, than I do. So what we're gonna do after this stream, you'll get the opportunity to move over to the Game Hammer Classic gaming stream with the Cupboard Monkey, the, tonight's co-host, and I'm going to be joining her for a game of Ticket to Ride, which is, uh, if you've not come across it before, it's a uh, train-related board game, board game, but on a computer. And it's great fun, actually. Uh, I got introduced to it about 10 years ago, and it really is a great game. Um, so, um, just got time to say thank you all for... What? What? 
Nine, I've gone back up to say goodbye. Alright, oh my word, that's used all the water, you know. Has it, my Yeah, Zaya, you can take the coke there, you chug that. I've got, I've got, i got wine. Do you want milk on your cornflakes? No, I'll have wine. So guys, just, it's just, been a great night. It's really flown by. It man. has, actually. That's always the sign of a good night. And don't forget that... Why is that turned off? Because I turned it off because it was swimming down. Oh, I should have said it and topped it off. <laughs> um, so don't forget as well that we have got uh, coming up uh, this week, <coughs> excuse me, the uh, Wednesday video will be doing a full review on, let me, let me find the, uh, uh, there we go. So in a moment you'll be seeing the Dutch livery class 332 Slim Jim. We'll be doing the full review on this all new Hellion release uh, on Wednesday's video. The Friday video is episode, are we on episode three or episode four? Episode three of the O-Gage Garden Railway Build. If you sound confused, it's simply because I'm already working on episode four. If she um, sounds confused, it's because she's Jenny. <laughs> yeah, if she sounds confused, it's because she is. Uh, but um, uh, then and next week, we're doing a special featuring the Hornby Railroad Plus range. Are they any good? Are they worth the money? And do they give a value for money option for the more budgetary constrained modeler to be able to get the locomotives that they want without spending massive amounts of money? And on the Friday video, we're going to be looking to showing you how to easily and cheaply upgrade this Railroad Plus model to give it fully functional lighting as well as cab interiors and um, a custom weathering job too and really bring this bad girl alive but um, until then this is me Jenny Kirk saying you take great care of yourself like share subscribe check out the Monday Club Wagon and the merch links down below and until next time you take great care of yourself happy modeling bye for now the train now departs against the 2101 surface to Butts Farting what? stopping at Alton Trinity Road, Grove Street Yard, Minneth Tatis, Tatis Neweth, Eindhoven, Pittsburgh somehow, and then on to Butts Farting. That's the 2101 service to Butts Farting. If you go up to the loft today, you'll sure have a big surprise. If you go up to the loft today, you'll never believe your eyes. For every train there ever was has gathered there together because today's the day that Jenny does the Monday Club. Good night. Tardis. Tardis. I can't do the noise. <laughs> what was that you dropped? My skis or horse. Oh, well, here you are. I'll take that away. Go on. Wrecking the bye joint. Bye. And we're going to get set for green game hammer. So don't forget that um, at the end of this stream, we'll have about 15 minutes or so of uh, trains running here on Weir Yard. And then we'll be moving you over to the Game Hammer Classic gaming stream, where I will be guesting along with Cupboard Monkey, and uh, we'll be playing a railway related game. It is a board game that you can go out and buy. You can get it as a physical board game, but it's also available through good old games. As a computer game, you can buy expansions, different maps. And it's a really fun tactical game involving building railroads and uh, making sure you've got enough train cars to be able to complete your route tickets. All will be explained and revealed on Game Hammer Classic Gaming from 9.50. Oh, excuse me from 9.15 and I will let the Cupboard Monkey win. Unless she's totally inept, I will let the Cupboard Monkey win.
Harris, unfortunately, I uh, don't have a lot of time because we're going to be moving over in a few minutes. Um, I did change, um, actually, two trains of coaches. They're different coaches from what we're running for the last few weeks. And uh, I've changed most of the locomotives that are running. But uh, for next week, we'll try and change things around a little bit. I actually have boxes of replacement motors here, two different sizes, um, this one's the smaller one, but I found the larger one I've got is a direct replacement for uh, um, the Hornby locomotives, uh, the Class 56 that's uh, chugging away, I actually replaced its motor and it's the same motor that a number of different manufacturers use. And as I ended up with a pile of, uh, of bat spare motor, um, I was able to re-motor it. And uh, I was going to re-motor the um, Class 43 HST for a friend as well. But I was actually able to fix the motor that they had in theirs. But it's, it's a common motor. You can get them fairly readily if you do need to replace motors. As Stevie film, the radius of the main running tracks they're probably the equivalent of radius 5. Camera failure.
Bally's 56XX, I had multiple complaints from my father that he was bored of seeing the Land Rover. So I changed it for a Fordson Major. Oh no, we've got hippies in their VW camper van moving in. Oh, what will the neighbours think? So we're going to start winding down now here at Weir Yard and preparing to move the program over to the Game Hammer Classic Gaming Channel. Stay tuned for some Ticket to Ride action where the Cupboard Monkey battles it out with Jenny for the vast supremacy of the rail routes on a map of choice, probably Pennsylvania or could it be North America? Or maybe we'll be moving to India. Who knows? You'll catch that on the Game Hammer Classic Gaming Channel in a matter of minutes as we move on over. You shouldn't need to do anything. And for those of you that wish to watch this battle of wits between Cupboard Monkey and Jenny, uh, you should be given the option to move straight on over. And certainly, Game Hammer Classic Gaming continues your Monday night streaming entertainment. Can you tell I used to work on radio? <laughs> This needs to be further up there. There we go. We've shipping format forecast, and now the shipping forecast. Time, Dogger. Uh, oh, and somewhere I don't know. Time, Dogger. Firth of Cromarty. Rising twelve. Gale force westerly. Chance of rain. Rockall, North Sea, and Outer Hebrides. Low 30, rising westerly. 12, 14. Chance of isolated snow showers. Ah, German Bite, Swiss Roll, Fred, Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. 
I don't listen to enough Radio 4 to know, to know um, shipping forecasts off by heart. Okay, so we're coming to an end for your We're Yard Monday Club live stream and the programme. We'll be moving straight on over to Covered Monkey Towers, where Gamehammer Classic Gaming will be taking a look at Ticket to Ride, this classic board game based train experience where Jenny will be battling it out with the Covered Monkey for ultimate supremacy of the damp sausage. Do not adjust your set, you should be given the opportunity to move straight on over. But from me, Jenny Kirk, Good night, take care, and thank you for joining us. And I'll see you in a few minutes on the next program.